All right. As you can see, this one is from the curl command as well. We were stopped earlier. We were able to actually get a reverse shell. This time, we can't even get that payload to sit on disk because Elastic Seam is blocking them. So how are we doing this? We actually have a rule for malware prevention. That's here. We can go and check it out. Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. My name is Howard. As most of you know, I work as a red teamer and one of the things that I'm trying to work on is learning how to attack all kinds of operating systems. In this case, I'm going to be learning how to attack Mac OS devices. I'll be generating a payload to actually get a reverse shell on a Mac OS device going to a C2 framework in this case, which is going to be Metasploit. Afterwards, we'll add an Elastic Security Agent in our Kali Paper Lab so that we can see if the defense mechanisms actually work. So we'll learn two things today. We'll deploy a reverse shell, make sure that it works. We'll try to maybe grab someone's clipboard and steal some things from this macOS device. Then afterwards, we'll add an Elastic Agent and hopefully we'll be able to see alerts like what you can see right here. So I was testing it earlier, as you can see, we can actually do endpoint detection and I will show you how to do all this. And hopefully by the end of this video, you learn something interesting like attacking Mac and also how to defend against these types of attacks. This is our lab environment here. We have my Kali Purple lab with OpenSense macOS victim, which is also a virtual machine running in this case in VMware. A Kali Purple, which I show you how to install on this channel. So if you want, there's a whole series that shows you how to install Kali Purple and all the Elastic Sim. Then we have uh, my attacker Kali, which is uh, just a separate machine that I like to use for attacking. But you can use your Kali Purple to attack this macOS victim. So everything is running in VMware right now, but you can run this in VirtualBox like I showed you earlier. And you can also visualize a Mac, which is something that I didn't know. As you can see, I'm actually in the process of cloning this virtual machine so I can have two of them. But for now, I think we can attack it while it's being cloned. How do we attack? In this case, I'm using Metasploit. So I looked up like, hey, what is, how, what is the format for uh, generating macOS payloads? So in this case, I'll be following this documentation here where I can set up my Metaprator reverse shell using this information here. We're going to attack Kali here. So the first thing that we do is we need to go and generate our payload. This is going to be how we attack uh, the victim. We generate our payload by saying, Mr. Venom, hey, give us a payload for OS X. In this case, I want a Metaprator for 64-bit uh, operating system. Uh, my local host, this is the Kali attacker machine's IP address. I want to use the generic port here, 444, because that's just easier for detection. I'm hoping the rules will catch this. And then I want it to be in the macho for format and output it to a file called payload.macho. So if you run this, this will just generate our payload. One way we can do this is we need to deliver this payload to the victim. How do we deliver this payload to the victim? We can send them a phishing email. We can convince them that we are IT support and they need to download this. There are multiple ways we can convince them. But for our victim in this case, I'm just going to show you that, hey, we're going to download this on our Mac uh, device. So if you go here, this is my Mac OS virtual machine. It's not a real um, machine. What I can do is I can just um, open a terminal. Let's go to my downloads folder. Actually, maybe let's go to the temp folder. Okay. So as you can see, I don't have much here. Before we do this, let's go back to our attacker machine and launch our Python 3. Minus M HTTP dot server on port 80. This is just our web server. So we're going to use, uh, let's use curl first. And here we named our payload payload dot macho. So we need to download that. So using curl payload dot macho output is um, payload dot macho. Okay. Uh, what's happening here? Curl, don't mess with me. Okay, curl HTTP 172 payload macho. Okay, dash output for so you need an O here for output. Okay, if I do an ls ls minus l, make sure that it's actually a real thing. So my payload dot macho, I can see the size here, so it's actually being delivered, no problem. We can also use Google Chrome to try to download this, but my curl command is working here. So the next thing we need to do is let's set up a listener in this Kali machine using uh, Metaprater. 
So I'll just here in MSF console. And in this listener, we will follow the same instructions that we saw here on how to actually listen, and I'll show you. So I'll link to this document in the com uh, comment section here. But we're launching our Metasploit. We need our listener, and we can start attacking. Okay, so with our listener, I'm going to use multi-handler just for quick uh, notes here to show you how fast we can do this. Okay, if you say options, this one here comes with a generic reverse TCP. This one is not a good one. It will still catch it, but we need to set our payload to be our metapreter reverse TCP. So we'll set it like that. So the only thing that's left here is to set our local host, which is our 172.16.0.10 IP address, and say run. All right, our listener is waiting for us to come back, going back to our Mac here. Let's make this into an executable. Uh, Payload.macho, then let's run it. All right, it's hanging. Let's go back here and watch what's going on here. All right, as you can see, our metapreter reverse shell came back. I can type shell, no, uh, get UID to get a user. In this case, we're in as user of Vagrant. If I do an LS, I can see that I'm in the temp folder with my payload of the macho and whatever this other stuff that was in there so we finally got a reverse shell the real question here is can we still get the reverse shell if we have our elastic sim working that's in kali purple can that elastic sim stop all this nonsense that we're doing here can we have a real endpoint detection so that we don't just get reverse shells and no idea that they actually happened that's really going to be the interesting thing here but for now let's do some cool things since we're already here According to this documentation here, we can see what's on the clipboard. So we can load some clipboard data. So first, let's load something on the clipboard from our Mac. I'm just going to load um, the word payload.macho. So I'll just copy that. This is my clipboard. The attacker can steal this clipboard. So if you had copied a password or something like that, the attacker can grab that. So let's see. According to them, load this, this extension here. Let's do that. All right, let's see if we can steal our clipboard. It should just tell us the name of the payload. All right, it says payload or macho. If I go and do something else in the in here, let's say I copied this. Notice that I will right click and copy. Let's see if the attacker will be able to steal that. Yeah, so we are able to interact with the system. Okay, then finally we can do a sysinfo see the information as you can see this is the mac os device that we have and all that and we can drop in the shell again uh, cd pwd ls that's what's on the users let's go to the downloads for this ls as you can see in the downloads we have a few like google chrome firefox was downloaded and the payload was downloaded a few times so we can get a reverse shell on a Mac. Let's background this session and run. We'll start a listener one more time. But before we do a second session, let's install our Elastic Sim um, agent, our Elastic agent. This will do endpoint detection and response. In this case, it will actually stop malware from working. How do we deploy the Elastic agent and does it work? Let's go back here. First, you go to Elastic Sim. If you set it up the same way that I did earlier, you should have Fleet working. So if you click there, you can go all the way down here to Fleet. Notice that I only have one machine here. I can say add an agent. And for this agent, I would like to add Elastic Defend. 
that's a policy that I added last time. If you don't know how to add a policy, you can just come here and say agent policies, uh, create a new agent policy, or maybe we just we should just create uh, one right now. In this case, the new policy will be Mac OS, let's say create agent policy. Okay, once we create the agent policy, we can click on it and see if it has any integrations. Right now, it only has system. So this is, I think, the system metrics. We can add integration. And for this, we want the Elastic Defend. So let's add Elastic Defend. I'll name it Defend. And on this policy, they have a few options. You can do you know, data collection, which does not do much. Uh, next generation AV essential or complete EDR. I want the full complete EDR to the macOS policy. So let's add that. You only have to do this once, then you, you can just keep adding agents. So for me, I can say add an elastic agent to your host for that macOS policy. Uh, for this, I want to, to run a Mac. So choose Mac. And as you can see, it will just uh, enroll. So for this Mac, I'll just copy this code and straight to my Mac. Let's open a new terminal. For this new window, I would like to go to my temp. So it's easier. Then once you go to your temp, you can just paste the entire enrollment uh, text we can go through it together, but it's pretty simple. But instead of enrolling here, I'd like to remove the last line because there's a trick we need to do uh, to force it. So for now, I just wanted to download and uh, then CD to the directory. Then we can install later because for this, to install it, I want to do it in two parts. I've ran into issues before. So right now we're just going to download, unzip, and then CD to the directory. And once it's done, I'll show you how to install it. All right, so as you can see, we are in our folder, the Elastic Sim. If you do an LS, this is what we just downloaded. So we have the agent on Diamo, the Elastic Agent here. We need to install this agent. And to install it, I'd like to do it in two parts. First part, I'll just install, which is sudo install. Elastic Agent install the F for force. And let it go. So no, notice notice that uh, at the top here it says Elastic Agent has successfully be, been installed. That's good. Sometimes you may get an error that says a system link failed to link because if a certain folder doesn't exist, you can just create it. But uh, Elastic Agent has been successfully installed. Now I would like to enroll using my enrollment token here. So this is what we'll do. Let's get me out of the way. So here's my full enrollment token. You know, you can't enroll it, it's local to me. So instead of install, we'll choose enroll. And the reason why I do it in two parts is because if it fails, I want to know, was it the enrollment that failed? Or was it the installation that failed? And this can be a pain to deal with if you're not sure which part is failing. Uh, dash F for force, dash dash insecure. I think that's the flag I need to pass. Insecure meaning don't worry about the certificate. Let's see. All right, it seems to be working. Successfully enrolled Elastic Agent. Okay, so I had to do this enrollment a couple of times. As you can see, mine is healthy. Let me show you the command that I ran here. So I had to run this command here, sudo Elastic Agent. So you want to run the Elastic Agent that has been installed already, not the local one. So earlier I had done this, that's wrong. You need to run the Elastic Agent binary that has been installed on the system. So now our Mac has uh, a working agent, which is awesome. We just need now to see if we can come back in here and download our payload. So remember, earlier we had this payload.macho here. Let's try to download it one more time and see what happens. But before we do that, let's go and check our lets one more time. Refresh, nothing. Okay, after everything works here, I should be able to now get alerts that 
show that uh, the payload was stopped. So let's use our curl command. Uh, in this case, let me name this one payload one. But this is curl command that's going to reach out and try to download my payload. Dish o. All right, it looks like it worked. Ls minus la. Do I have payload one here? Uh, what happened? I swear this said it worked. Received and all that. But payload one is nowhere to be seen. I think I know why. It's because our elastic agent is actually blocking this download. So the rules usually run every, I think, five minutes. So after a few minutes here, we should see an alert that shows that it worked. But just to be sure, let's uh, open Google Chrome in here. Let's go to our site. In this case, notice that I have my um, payload.macho. Let's try to download it. There it is. Let's download it one more time. Yeah, notice that the downloads are failing here when I click download. What's happening here? Why are they failing? That's because our endpoint detection and response is actually blocking these payloads because they're generic Metasploit payloads. They have all the signatures that show that, hey, this is a bad, bad payload because of uh, it's not even sanitized or anything like that. So because of that, we should start seeing alerts here show up in a few minutes because the rules will be firing. In fact, right now, as you can see, <laughs> we, we got seven because I tried so many times. So these alerts here are because we tried to download our payload for the Mac device. And we should be able to tell which ones came from curl, which one came from uh, Google Chrome. In this case, this is malware prevention. So let's open one. Okay. Get me out of the way. Malware prevention. This one was payload one <laughs> from Google Chrome when we tried. Let's look for the one from curl because we did so many uh, for the curl command. All right. As you can see, this one is from the curl command as well. We were stopped earlier. We were able to actually get a reverse show. This time, we can't even get that payload to sit on disk because Elastic Seam is blocking them. So how are we doing this? We actually have a rule for malware prevention. That's here. We can go and check it out. Okay, so this is the rule that's firing and it will tell us it's already created a Generate and detection alert each time an elastic end agent endpoint alert is received. It allows you to immediately begin investigating uh, endpoint stuff. So that's a very good rule that we have here. Uh, if you wanted to see, it's part of uh, Elastic Defend and it's looking for uh, that information. So that's really cool stuff. It will show you also the alerts that fired. So we cannot do anything here after this is done because this device is now protected which is awesome but hey there are ways we can try to bypass this agent that's what i'm going to be learning in the future that's why i have this lab is i know these detections exist i know that these preventions exist as an attacker as a red teamer what can i do to bypass these do i run a generic metasploit payload when things like this are happening maybe not so that's the takeaway from today is as an attacker we need to do better as a defender, there are tools out there like Elastic Sim that will let you practice and really learn your skill. So for now, it's safe to say there is no Metasploit that's going to come back here. We can't even get our agent on the disk. So that was a good demo for the day. In the future, I'll show you some advanced methods as I learn them. But for now, I think we covered a lot of really cool stuff. Otherwise, if you like this stuff, please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me a lot. Uh, when these videos reach other people. Otherwise, thanks for being here and I hope to see you next time.